DreAllDay.com. What's going on, everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. I want to talk about these positions. Now, you may have already seen the videos that I put out about what skills you need to play each position. I think I'm going to put those out after I do this one. So this one's going to come first, then you're going to see those. So I already recorded those, but I'm recording this one after. So I'm putting out this one first, and then y'all gonna see the rest of them. Then y'all gonna see the rest of them. I wanna make sure I'm being very clear for all you basketball players out there who seem to have a misunderstanding of what it takes to be a successful, productive basketball player. Here's what it does not take. It does not take you to call yourself a certain position. Calling yourself a point guard doesn't mean that you can play. Calling yourself a shooting guard doesn't mean you can shoot. Calling yourself a wing doesn't mean you're athletic or you can guard anybody. Calling yourself a big doesn't mean you're going to grab any rebounds. If you say you're a, a number one position, doesn't mean you can dribble. Number one thing you must figure out before the positions, the position names do not matter. Number one thing you must figure out is what your game is, and then you need to have that game. Let me just give you an example. I'm coaching a basketball team. I don't coach basketball, but let's say I'm coaching a basketball team. All of you walk into the gym for tryouts. I point at you. I say, all right, what can you bring to the table? I'm trying to put my team together. Tell me what you're good at. I'm going to put you in a position to go do that thing you say you're good at, and then you can show me. What do you do good? And then you say, well, coach, I'm a point guard. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't think you heard my question, young lady. I don't think you heard my question, young man. I asked you, what are you good at? I didn't say what position you play. I said, what are you good at? See, just because you call yourself a point guard, that doesn't, that doesn't mean I should assume that you can do anything. Just because you call yourself a point guard doesn't mean I should assume you can dribble or I should assume you can shoot or make free throws or pass or guard anybody. It doesn't mean anything just because you call yourself a position. You call yourself a shooting guard, I'm not assuming you can shoot. You call yourself a small forward, I'm not assuming that you're a kind of dynamic guy who can play with the bigs or get in the paint or handle the ball when I need it or grab boards when I need it. I'm not assuming anything just because you call yourself a position because I can name players who play in the NBA right now who we all know, who we all watch, who can't do certain things even though they're a certain position. So a position name does not mean that you're entitled to do anything, doesn't mean you're entitled to have a certain spot on the floor, and it definitely doesn't mean you should be in the game. Just because you call yourself a point guard, players come to me and be like, Dre, well, if I wanna try out for my high school team as a shooting guard, what skills do I need? Well, number one skill you need is you need to have some damn game, because if you can't play, I don't care what you call yourself, you're gonna be on the bench or you're gonna be in the audience with a ticket that you had to buy to come to the game to watch the guys who can actually play because I didn't put your ass on the team because you can't play. You walking around calling yourself a shooting guard, you can't even play. I don't even care if you can't shoot. Dwayne Wade's not a good shooter, he's a Hall of Famer. Ray Allen's a great shooter, he's not that great of a ball handler, he's a Hall of Famer. Steve Nash is a great ball handler at the point guard position, great finisher with both hands and he can't jump like a Derrick Rose or Russell Westbrook. Steve Nash, all-star. Russell Westbrook, all-star. Derrick Rose, MVP, just like Steve Nash. So there's no one skill that you need to have to play any position. Number one thing you need to play any position is you must have game. If you have no game, you will call yourself a center, power forward, small forward, shooting guard, point guard. You're not playing. You're not getting in the game because as soon as I put you in the game, you say you're a shooting guard or a point guard. I'll put you in the game and say, all right, go show me what it means to be a point guard. And then you're getting your ass bust because you can't guard the other guy. You can't bring the ball up the floor. You can't make an open jump shot. You can't get to the hole. You can't touch the ball without turning it over. You can't grab a rebound. You can't guard the guy at the other opposite position, opposite of you. What do I need you on the court for? Oh, I'm a shooting guard, coach. Oh, so? No, you're on the bench is what you are. Oh, coach, you know, I would have played better if you would have let me play point guard. You had me playing small forward. So if you let me play point guard, I'll play better. I'm like, no, because listen, if you can play, you can play. Can we agree? Let me ask a question. Can we agree? That if you put a player, let's, let's pick a player who's a good player. Let's say Russell Westbrook. Let's say we put Russell Westbrook at center. If I play Russell Westbrook at center, is he still going to have an impact on the game? Yes or no? Yes. Now, will he have as much as he would if I had put him at the point and let him play how he normally plays for OKC? Probably not. He probably would have to make some adjustments. But is he still going to have an impact on the game? Yes. Why? Why is he still going to have an impact on the game? Because he's a center? Because he's been disguising himself the whole time? He's not really a point guard. He's really a center? No. Why? Because Russell Westbrook can play. Bobby Knight had this story. Bobby Knight used to coach University of Indiana. When Michael Jordan was coming out to the NBA draft, 1984, and Bobby Knight didn't coach Jordan in college. Dean Smith coached him at North Carolina, but Bobby Knight coached Jordan on 1984 Olympic team, Team USA, back when USA used to send college players to the Olympics. He coached Jordan. My Bobby Knight had a friend who worked for the Portland Trailblazers. And at the time, the Portland Trailblazers already had a shooting guard by the name of Clyde Drexler. And Portland had the number two pick in the draft. Number one pick was Houston. 
they took a guy named Olajuwon. That was a pretty good pick. Portland had the number two pick, and they were trying to decide who to take. Bobby Knight called the guy from the Portland Trailblazers, and he said, listen, I coached Michael Jordan in the Olympics. I've seen this dude every day in practice. You need to pick Michael Jordan. The guy from the Portland Trailblazers said, look, we already have a guy at his position. We already got Clyde Drexler. What we really need is a player to play the five position. We need somebody to play center. Bobby Knight said, pick Jordan and let him play center. Why? Why am I telling you that story? Because Michael Jordan still would have had an impact on the game no matter what position you put him on the court. If you put Kevin Durant, Michael Jordan, Clyde Drexler, Kobe Bryant, and Dwayne Wade, you put that five out on the floor to play, is only one of those guys going to have a good game because only one of them gets to play their position, quote unquote? Hell no. All of them going to have an impact. Why? Because they can play. Not because they call themselves shooting guards. You put five shooting guards who are Hall of Famers all on the court at the same time, they still going to go out and kick a bunch of ass on the court, all up and down the court. Why? Because they can play. Not because they get to play their position. There will only be one shooting guard on the court. You put five point guards on the floor. If you put Magic Johnson, Steve Nash, Russell Westbrook, who else a point guard? The Isaiah Thomas, the old Isaiah Thomas, and who else? Bob Cousy, Oscar Robinson, Allen Iverson on the court all at the same time. Are they still going to win some games? Yes. Why? Because they all got to play their position? No. It's only one basketball. Everybody can't bring the ball up at the same time. Why? Because they can play. You put five players on the court who can play, good things will happen. You put five players on the court just because of what they said their position is, if they can't play, you're still going to lose. So if I walk in the gym, I say, who's a point guard? All the point guards go here. All the shooting guards go over here. All the small forwards go over here. All the power forwards here and all the centers over there. And I got every position, everybody lined up with their group, what position they play. I'm going to take one guy from each group and say, all right, y'all my starting five, go play. Now, if they can't play, are we going to win the game? No. Why? Even though, wait, they all play in their position. They all chose the position they wanted to play. I let them play the position that they said they can play, but we still getting our ass kicked. Why? Because they can't play. See, if you have no game, but you know your position, you'll be in the stands watching because you won't even be on the team. Now, if you have game, and you don't know your position, or you don't even give yourself a position, or you don't care about the positions, are you going to be in the stands because you don't know your position? You ever seen a player get kicked off a basketball team, or not make a basketball team, or not get in the game because the coach said, I'm not letting you play until you tell me what position you are. But listen, Kobe, I know you got game, and I've seen what you can do, but until you decide what position you are, until you declare yourself a certain position, I'm not putting you in the game. Did Phil Jackson never say that? Any of you ever have a coach say that? Listen, I'm not letting you play until you tell me what position you are. Listen, I know you're the best player in the gym. I've seen it. I've seen that you're the best player on the team. But look, I'm not letting you play until you choose a position. That's never happened to any of you. Never. But I guarantee some of you didn't make a team because you decided that you were a point guard, small forward, center, whatever you decided you were, but you had no skills and you got cut. Oh, Dre, I tried to make the team as a point guard, but I got cut. It's because you can't play. Nobody cares what you tr what position you tried to make it as. You could have tried to make it as a center. You could have tried to make it as a six man. You could have tried to make it as a small forward or a shooting guard. You still would have got cut. Not because of the position you tried out for, because you can't play. That's the bottom line. You can't play. If Shaquille O'Neal goes to a basketball team, Sha Shaq in his prime, or let's use somebody else, Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook goes to try out for a basketball team in his prime, and he says, look, I'm trying out as a center. And the coach says, okay. Go out, go out there and play. Is it going to be obvious within five minutes that Russell Westbrook can play, even though he's playing out of position, quote unquote? Yes or no? Absolutely. It's going to be obvious that he can play. If Steph Curry has to play center, is it going to be obvious by the end of the game that Steph Curry can play, even though he was playing center? Is it going to be obvious that he can play? Yes. Why? Because skills show through no matter what position you put. When you can play, you can play. And when you can't play, you can't play. Kobe Bryant. I'm from Philadelphia. Kobe Bryant is from the Philadelphia area. He was, like a, he was like a senior in college when I was like in seventh grade, something like that. So Kobe Bryant, I remember watching. There used to be this high school sports show that came on like every Sunday morning. It was like an hour-long show to go over like all the high school sports news. So during basketball season, I would always watch the show, right? Kobe Bryant, you can look this up on YouTube. You'll probably find the videos on YouTube. When Kobe Bryant was in high school, he was like 6'6". He was the tallest player on the team. Guess what position he played on offense? Who knows if they even had positions, but the way the offense was run, let's put it that way. The way they ran their offense, Kobe Bryant was not on the shooting guard, spotting up, like, let me get a three-pointer. He wasn't doing that. Kobe Bryant was in the high post. He was in the high post. The other team would play zone. Kobe Bryant was in the high post like this. Don't me the ball in the high post. He'd get the ball in the high post, and he'd do his thing. He'd catch it, hit the little fadeaway on you. He'd drive around you, dunk on you. He'd post guys up, scoring the paint. 
he would get his a, a few chances to do his outside stuff. But for that team and that situation he was in, Kobe Bryant was playing in the paint on offense. On defense, he was playing the big man. He was guarding the other team's center. Why? Because he was the biggest guy on the team. He had to. So all you players out there making the excuse, oh, I can't show my game because I'm really a guard, but the coach makes me play in the paint. Listen, if you can play, you can play. If you can't play, then you're going to find an excuse. John Sammons, the guy who played in the NBA, I don't think he's in the league anymore, but he played for the Sixers, he played for the Kings, he played for the Raptors, the Bucks, played for several teams, the Bulls. He played at UM, at, at D1 UM in college. He's from my neighborhood in Philadelphia. John Sammons is like 6'7". He was 6'7 when he was in high school. In high school, John Sammons, he went to this high school called Plymouth White Marsh. When he was in high school, John Sammons played center. He was the starting center on his basketball team. He scored, he would average like 10, 12 rebounds a game. He was playing center on his team. I saw all the game. He was playing center. They was winning championships. John Sammons was playing center, right? Now let me tell you what happened next. John Sammons went to the University of Miami on a full scholarship to play ball. What position did he play for four years at UM? Point guard. Four years he was a point guard. So how did he go from playing center in high school to playing point guard? Because when he was playing on other teams, when he played in other leagues, AAU or whatever he was doing, when he went to those camps to show his game, he played the position that he felt like he was going to play in college, and he showed his game. Why? Because he was working on his skill set outside of in high school. The coach probably knew, like, listen, John, I know you're good enough to play guard in college, but look, look at the team we got. You understand we need you in the paint. This is what you need to do to help the team out. And he was a smart guy. He understood he needs to help his team. It's not about him. It's not about, oh, I'm going to play point guard in college. So, coach, I refuse to play center on this team. So, you know what? Put me on the bench because I refuse to play center. I want to play point guard because that's what I think I'm going to play in college. Listen, if he had did that, he never would have got his chance to play in college because nobody in college would have even seen him playing because he was on the bench during the game. So, he did what he had to do, played what his team needed. He did his thing. He went to college and played point guard. Of course, was he working on his skills outside of that? Yes. When I first started playing ball and I would go to the park to work out in the summertime in the middle of the day and it was blazing hot, I didn't even know who, I didn't know John Sammons, but I would see him. It would be me and him. We'd be the only two people out there. He'd be on that court, I'd be on this court, working out. He'd be out there working on his game. I, I seen him do it. When I was starting out, he was like 18, I was like 14. He was out there doing it. He was the only one out there besides me, if anybody. What? He was working on his game. He was playing center on his school, point guard when he got to college. He went to the NBA. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, because he had that all-around game. Look at Kobe. He was playing center in college. Look it up. Look it up. The guy was playing center in college. He didn't have no size on his team. So all you players out there making the excuse, oh, there's no big guys on my team. So even though I want to play guard in college, they're making me play big. So I'm not doing my thing. No, you're not doing your thing because you can't play. You're not doing your thing because you have no skills. You need to work on your fucking game. Get your game up so you can stop making excuses about the position. The position is not holding you back. All you players out there talking about, I'm not doing my thing because the coach put me at this position or he wouldn't let me try out as a shooting guard, that's bullshit. No, the reason you're not doing your thing because you don't have a thing because you have no game. All right, when you get some game, everything's going to start working for you. You put Michael Jordan at center, he's still going to do his thing. You put Russell Westbrook at power forward, he's still going to do his thing. If you put Shaq at point guard, he's still going to somehow figure out a way to do his thing. All right, he's going to figure out a way that he ain't got to dribble. He's going to pass it, pass the ball up to half court, then he's going to go do, give me the ball. Let me do my thing here in the post. Because point guards can post up, right? Point guards can post up, right? Yes. He's going to figure out a way to do his thing one way or another because a good player is a good player no matter where you put him. I once heard DJ Khaled say, and this is before the Snapchat thing, before he blew up on Snapchat. DJ Khaled was, there was one time it was a rapper. This is before he really got big. He was known, but he, before he was big, DJ Khaled. There was a rapper who was saying to Khaled, like, yo, you're not, you don't never play my records. You don't play my records in the clubs. You don't play my records when you're on the radio. Why don't you play my records more often? And DJ Khaled said, and he was just saying this in general to all rappers. He said, listen, man, it's not about me playing your record. It's not about somebody giving you spins. It's not about anybody else pushing you out there. It's not, any, it's not about, and all you basketball players, follow what I'm saying here. It's not about somebody putting you in position to do your thing. It's not about somebody helping you out. It's not some, about somebody letting you play your position. It's not about none of that. And this is for all of you, whether you're a business person, you're a coach, you're a basketball player, you're a rapper, whatever it is you do. It's not about anybody else putting you in position because this is what DJ Khaled said back to this rapper who was complaining that Khaled wasn't playing his record. He said, a hit record can't be stopped. See, if you make a hit record, there's nothing any one DJ can stop you from blowing up. 
no DJ can stop you from blowing up if you make a hit record. What's a hit record that's out right now? You think of any, think of your favorite song or your, your favorite popular song. What's the song Drake got out right now? One Dance is a hot song, right? That's a hot song. Everybody knows about it. Control a hot song. Those are hit records. If every DJ in the world said, you know what, we boycotting Drake, we're not going to play that song because we hate Drake. Drake said, fuck all DJs, so we're not going to play any of Drake's records. Is that record still going to blow up? Yes or no? Absolutely it's going to blow up. Why? Because the consumers, me and you, who aren't DJs, we still going to hear the song. We're still going to be like, yo, that's a hot song. And I'm going to play it, and then you're going to be playing it, and you're going to blast it out of your radio, and you're going to blast it in your headphones, you're going to tell your friends, and your friends are going to tell their friends. Why? Because it's a good record. You can't stop a good record. A solid hit record can't be stopped by a DJ. A great basketball player can't be stopped by a position. A player who is destined to be good, destined to play in college, destined to play in the pros, can't be stopped by a coach. Even if the coach really does hate you, as many of you claim, even if the coach does hate you, if you're as good as you say you are, you're still going to get to where you're going. The coach can't stop you. The DJ can't stop you. The position can't stop you. Only thing that can stop you is you and your lack of game. So stop making excuses. Stop thinking the position is the key to your success because it's not. Because if you ain't got no game, you're still going to be a bum. Hopefully this helps somebody out. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com Ever wonder what it would be like if you could be more confident on a more consistent basis? What about if you could just brush off the negativity of other people more easily so they didn't stumble you and slow you down? What if you could be more of a leader so that people fell under your influence and followed your direction and your communication? What if you could have more focus on the positive things that you want instead of looking at the negativity and letting that slow you down and put fear in your heart? And what if you could do all of this, tie it all in and make it part of your normal day-to-day -day life for the rest of your life? Would there be any benefit to that? I think so and I know you do too. Well, guess what? My new course is called Bulletproof Mindset, and it covers everything I just said and a whole lot more. It's an eight-week course. You can get all the details and get started right now at DreAllDay.com slash Bulletproof. Check it out, and I'll see you over there. Work on your game. If you're on Snapchat, hit me on the snap. My snap name is at Dre Baldwin. You already know how that works. And I got a podcast, if you didn't know. It is called Work On Your Game. It is an everyday podcast where I talk about getting yourself into the right mindset, that bulletproof mindset, getting yourself seen, heard, known, getting the exposure you want, and making things happen in your life instead of waiting for things to happen to or for you. Subscribe to that podcast when you're on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Make sure you check it every single day. Make sure you're subscribed so you catch the heat. Work on your game. Dre Ball, Dre Ball.